Good morning. Welcome to Trading R. I'm Reema Tanduka with me, Sonia Shinoy. Good morning. Things are looking good, right? For our markets, we're up close to about a half a percent. The positive handover from U.S. markets helps. And the fact that crude prices have seen a seminal decline. So crude prices are now at $85 per barrel. So the Nifty is now advanced for the third consecutive session. Um, and today is, of course, the November series expiry. But the positive is that the December futures, the Nifty December futures, are actually suggesting a big premium of close to about 140 points. Does that indicate that this buoyancy in the markets is likely to extend? The markets are preparing themselves for a good up move next uh, in the December series remains to be seen. If it happens, I guess we'll call it a Santa Claus rally. But um, just talking about the November series, it's been pretty good for our markets. The Nifty is up 3.5%. The banks are up 4%. Well, the Nifty PSU banks, that's where all the meat was in the up move. The Nifty PSU banking index was up close to about 17%. Um, you know, and for this week, while we've been consolidating, and there is a bit of a positive bias, there are many individual stocks which have seen big moves on either side. So that's, uh, you know, some of the stocks which have seen some big moves outside of the index this week. So on the gainer side, Easy Trip, 50% up. Yuko Bank in the lot of PSU banks is rally close to about 30%. But on the losing side, it's these new age listings, the large block deals have weighed on Paytm as well as Nika this week. Oh, absolutely. And what a great move for the market, right? I mean, it's like it needed that one trigger and I guess the writing was on the wall with the US Fed saying that perhaps they're going easy on uh, rate hikes. The market just latched on to that and sort of built on to their gains. And to add to that, the fall in crude is also something that perhaps the street was, has taken with both hands. So the recipe was intact for the market to build on to its gains. Now, the important bit is whether it lasts for the rest of the day because you have expiry coming up. Uh, the US markets are shut later today. Uh, so let's see. But for now, there is no volatility. It's uh, The uptrend is intact. We build on to our gains. And um, the second half of the trading session, of course, could get a bit volatile. Remember, FIs continue to sell. I mean, FIs have sold almost 4,000 crores in the last four trading sessions. So that's something that you need to keep on your radar. But there are plenty of stocks in focus this morning. So let's get straight down to that. Tata Consumer Products is a top nifty gainer. The Bisleri management today said that the company is in talks with the Tata Group to sell part of their stake. Mangalam is joining in to give us all the details. Mangalam... Uh, it was a very exciting morning, you know, speaking to the Bisleri management, trying to understand what's happening there. But these are, if it happens, if and when the deal happens, these are two iconic brands sort of coming together. A marriage of icons, uh, you know, if that happens. Like you said, you know, two brands that evoke maximum trust in India, Tata's and Bisleri, they will come together were that to happen. But as far as the numbers that we have so far, the numbers that have been reported, it is likely to be a deal worth nearly 6,000 to 7,000 odd crore rupees. We had the management of Bisleri confirm that their revenues are close to around 2,500 odd crores and 220 crores is their profitability. Now, Tata Consumer, the first half, they've run revenues of close to around 6,700 crores with uh, close to around 670 crores of profits. So if you double that, you know, it could be an e annual revenue and EPS accretion by about 15 to 16%. What does this mean for uh, uh, Tata's in terms of uh, the money that they're paying? Their market cap is close to around 71,000 crores. They have cash of over 2,000 crore rupees. So the dilution in any case is not likely to be more than 8 to 10 odd percent, which means that for 8 to 10 percent of your dilution, you are getting 15, 16 percent EPS accretion. That is the big play. And this does not account for the big benefits that would come by cost synergies as well as cross selling of Tata's water brands to Bisleri itself. As far as the package drinking water industry is concerned, it's a 20,000 crore category of which 60% is un un unorganized. So, you know, the shift to organized is one big trigger. Premium and value added segments are doing extremely well. So, with Tata's actually going ahead and acquiring Bisleri, if the deal were to happen, you know, it gives them volume, it gives them 30% share of the organized market. And Himalayan, which Tata already operates, give them value. And Tata Water Plus, which does copper, etc., gives them value add. So, they have the entire portfolio, so to say, of packaged drinking water. But, you know, keep the numbers and the brand strategy aside. Just look back and look at it as consumers. Tata's and Bisleri coming together would definitely be an iconic moment. No, absolutely. Very strong brands, business, as well as growth outlook. And the way this uh, 2,500 crore of Bisleri revenues is derived is, as Manglam said, the entire market is about 20,000. Of that, the organized portion is about 40,000. And in that, Bisleri has closed about a 32% stake. So that's how the number of 25,000 crore of annual revenues comes. Uh, but earlier today, we had a chat with the chairman of Bisleri, uh, the iconic, legendary Ramesh Shohan. Listen in to what he had to say and the kind of negotiations he's having with the Tata Group. Just trying to understand at what stage of discussions 
uh, are you right now with the Tatars? We are in discussion. Does that mean that if a deal has to happen, it will be with the Tatars only? Or are there other players in the fray too? Others okay. are there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not uh, discussion yet. But it's not about 2,500 crores of Bisleri's revenue in the year? How much? 2,500 crores. 2,500 crores? 2,500 crores, sir. Ah. Alright. 2,500 crores. Net profit number approximately 220 crores? 220 crores? Approximately, yes. Okay, that's a man who has built an iconic brand and is uh, finally letting it go. It's a, a big moment as well, right? I mean, uh, in the industry, uh, a brand that he has created. And of course, I mean, age is not on his side, so maybe he would want to sort of let go of, of that. Age. 82 years old and uh, lending it to a company or an industry or a brand, the Tatas, who... Um, well, well, of course, sure, take it. I think that, that the, the, legacy brand, the legacy continues, absolutely, right? The brand absolutely. value uh, remains intact. And of course, as you said, his legacy 